Hello everyone and welcome. I still don't have an intro because this is only the second video on this channel. It is a continuation of surprise, the first video on this channel. So we're all still building on this cold climate zoo that doesn't have a better name yet. I'm sorry. Uh, I know cold climate zoo is kind of a mouthful and we're gonna find a name for it. Hopefully someday, maybe question mark, but for now we're just gonna call it the cold climate zoo. And I mean, it describes what it is, right? It's animal that animals that live in a somewhat colder climate um, and today we're building for one of those animals which is the European badger. They are going to be our entrance animals so the first animal that you're seeing once you're entering the zoo and I thought they'd be fine for this because they're fairly active, they're fairly easy to see um, but not like a high ticket animal like you don't go to the zoo thinking man I really want to see the badger <laughs> you know what I mean. So, um, I mean, but they're so adorable. Uh, and also, I kind of just had an idea for them, to be honest. I, uh, it's not really from a reference picture or like uh, an inspiration or whatever. It's kind of just like this shape that I had in my head that I wanted to try and I thought it'd be perfect for a smaller animal. Um, the idea being that these are little like round terraces that kind of overlap each other but like very visibly round um, in this like modern white perimeter that you're going to see in like just a minute um, and this little these little terraces they kind of overlap each other and to overlap they obviously have to be on different like height elevations so what this creates is that, I mean, you could have kind of seen it in the beginning when I was terraforming that uh, I borrowed one of my employees there to see what would be the eye level and what would be the hip level of the guests. And that was important to me because I wanted the badgers, I wanted them to be elevated because they're fairly small. So I wanted them to be kind of closer to the eye level of the guests so that they don't have to look down and like search the floor to see the badger. But so I kind of wanted to lift the badgers up, but one, like on one of these panels, they are just lifted up to kind of like a hip level for the guests. And then on this one, the one that we're working on right now, they're more on eye level. So you'd see them kind of from the side almost. Um, which I thought would be interesting to get this little, like, a different little angle. And I've seen this in some zoo. I don't really remember which one it was, but I've definitely been to a zoo and it was a skunk exhibit. And you would walk into this, like, old American school bus. It was really cool, actually. And you would look out the window, but the school bus was kind of, like, sunken into the ground on the other side. So the skunks would walk around on your eye level or, like, the level that look out of the window sitting in the bus I mean obviously the bus wasn't driving it was like <laughs> it was just like a prop thing I guess um, but yeah that was pretty cool and that I kind of had in the back of my mind thinking like okay this is not too unrealistic like you could do this um, and yeah so that was kind of the idea for these like little uh, different um, levels and I think it really works well for the badgers um, it would have also worked for prairie dogs maybe, but I have another idea for the prairie dogs later on. So um, yeah, the badgers it was. Also the prairie dogs are fairly small. I wouldn't necessarily put them in um, in the entrance area, you know. Um, so yeah, right now you see me walk on these like thick white perimeters and I messed them up. <laughs> I used the mop pillar technique and it did not work. I don't even know exactly what I did wrong, but something was wrong because I had to fix it. And it took a long time to fix, which is what you just saw me do. Um, but yeah, luckily I could use the same thing once I had it fixed for all the different uh, circle thingies that I needed. Uh, in total there's three circles and there's some fences that kind of connect them. Because in the middle I wanted to leave some space for like signage and whatever. Because still, this is like the entrance area, so you would also need like some sort of information. Um, and now you kind of see it start to take its um, its final form. And um, yeah, okay, now you see me connect them. And I just I'm I'm going to go on off topic a bit here. I love these like these pieces. 
I, I, I don't really see them used that much. I use them for everything. These like white blocks. I mean, right now you can already tell what this enclosure looks like and we've not used a single different item. We just use these white blocks. I love them. Um, but yeah, we're just using the habitat fences to fence this off just because I thought it'd be the easiest to get them to be round. I mean, easy is like quote unquote easy because it's kind of hard to make these like circles with the fences but I, I mean it's still easier than if I try to make it look round using small little glass pieces for something or whatever but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm as, I, as I said I'm really happy with how it turned out actually and um, kind of the backside the highest up circle thing you can't see the badgers and later on they get a little pool there but the visitors aren't going to be seeing the badgers once they go to the back. And my thought was kind of like, okay, these are the entrance animals. They get the most traffic around, you know, their habitat. So I thought it would just be fair to give them a lot of space to go back into so that they can get away from the busy paths that surround the front parts. But obviously the way that you do it in Planet Zoo and the way that real zoos actually also do it is that all of their enrichment and food and stuff will be up in the front so that they, you know, are, I don't want to say forced, but they have a reason to come close to the guests and not just, you know, chill in the back. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have a lot of spaces to hide. They also have burrows in the front, but again, you know, they have to walk past the visitor's eyes to get into their burrows. Um, and then they get to relax in the burrows where, you know, they're not seen <laughs> um, and yeah I mean it took a while I think to get these the the perimeter of these right and then I also cut out a lot of pathing because these round paths they were driving me nuts but <laughs> um, I think once we have this just like the general outside of it done it's a fairly quick build uh, it still took a lot of hours um, because obviously I messed up the circles, which took a lot of time, but, um, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with foliage and rock work and stuff for this. I mean, that's always the most pun fun part for me. I love the architecture bits and I love getting inspired for architecture, but once I get to the foliage and just like making it overground and pretty, that's just my thing. Um, so yeah, I don't think I could, I mean, I probably could build super neat, but I don't know if I want to so yeah this will be kind of overgrown and um, we are taking one of the little things that we already did in the entrance building which is this like waved wooden panel thing <laughs> um, you know like making these like shape like a wave you know what I mean yes we already did this in the entrance and we're doing it here again and we're going to be you doing it in some other enclosures that I've already built um, to kind of have some some cohesive parts of this and in the back they have a little bit of a indoor just like holding area it's really nothing special I did kind of decorate the inside I mean I always kind of decorate the inside I guess um, but it's definitely not as like beautifully detailed as the outside because I'm thinking like you would walk through this and this is also a thing the the little building in the back is absolutely nothing special it's, it's literally just a box because the uh, the thing is like you would put the most money into what your visitors which are your customers can see you wouldn't put that much money into something that literally only your employees and your animals would see so this is really just a box as you can see um, as long as it looks like tidy and neat and doesn't grab the attention of the visitors, there's really no need for this to be an expensive building. So it's fairly cute and simple and straightforward. And I kind of regret doing this little like, almost like a backyard here <laughs> because the badgers love relaxing there. And it's kind of like, why? I mean, I want the visitors to see the badgers and all they do is be in this area where there's literally nothing. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but 
I still look I like how it looks. Um, and oh, by the way, in case you couldn't tell, there's been a lot of terraforming done between the entrance speed build and this speed build. And I wanted to include it, but then I was like, okay, I'm not gonna, you know, terraform for 30 minutes and talk about that for 30 minutes. I wanna talk about badgers because they're way cuter than hills. <laughs> um, and as you can tell, right now I'm getting into placing all the enrichment items, which is something that I'd absolutely suggest because you're gonna forget it and then they are going to ruin your terrain because that's what they do in this game. And um, so having them in first always helps me personally uh, to, you know, not get mad at the terrain later on because I mean, if you do rock work and then the terrain gets messed up, you're like, well, great, now I have to we rock all of this because the terrain is messed up um so yeah that's always a bummer so i try to remember doing it first i don't i don't always do but i try to um and oh this doorway it kind of annoyed me that this was too small for the badger like i'm sorry but if a human can fit through it a badger can too like i would say that goes without saying but apparently it doesn't I mean, I love this game, but the hitboxes on the animals, girl, no. <laughs> um, I mean, you can walk, work around it and you kind of have to, but yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I wish they would allow, I mean, I'd rather have the badger clip through the wall a bit than not be able to walk through a doorway that is literally accessible to a human. Like, I understand that an animal isn't going to go through a uh, an animal what <laughs> an elephant isn't gonna go through the door that the keeper uses but a badger it should be able to fit through a door frame like you're a really thick badger if you don't fit through a door frame you know what i mean so yeah right now we're working on this little indoor section and honestly it's not like i've never built indoor sections before i've just not done it in a long time and i was like okay Try to get your hat back uh, in the game. <laughs> and, um, hey, high school musical. Um, and yeah, it took me a while to kind of get an idea again. I also don't think I've ever built uh, an enclosure for, or a, a indoor section for the badgers before. Um, so I was like, do they need cages? Do they need what do they need, you know? And in the end, we're kind of settling for a, kind of like a box uh, made out of the climbing frame pieces. Cause they figure like, okay, they live in burrows, so they probably like sleeping kind of like in enclosed space rather than a cage. Um, I think we're gonna do that in like a few seconds. And oh, I, I, that was a, the door situation was a pain. <laughs> <laughs> to, to say the least um but i mean i figured it out and i did that that on camera because it off camera because it was it was it took forever so you see me kind of built this little box here that is kind of like almost like simulating the burrow i guess make it kind of more dark and cozy for them they can also walk on top of it i'm putting in a little bit of a bridge i don't know if they would do that but i felt like <laughs> I mean, why not walk on top of it? <laughs> it's not like they're forced to. Um, so yeah, unfortunately they can't enter the uh, left, I think it's the left box, um, but because of the, the ramp going up, but I mean, that's just the game. In real life, they could fit under there, I think. Um, so I don't know, I think it's cute. I think it's kind of cozy. Um, this, this little like shutter thing, I know it's not the most realistic way to build this, but I thought it was like good enough. Um, and yeah, I, I also, I really like the roof on this. I usually struggle with roofing. This is something that I couldn't even do in the Sims. Like it was always like, okay, I like this build, but it doesn't have a roof. And then I started hating it cause I, I was so bad at doing the roof. 
But in the end, I like how the roof here turns out. I'm gonna uh, switch up this window later on, or right now, I guess, um, to kind of enjoy that window more. Uh, and I like it. I like when I am able to incorporate a window because I usually forget that with the backstage areas, which is so sad because I'm thinking like, okay, this this poor animal, if they for some whatever reason have to stay in there, they don't even have lights. Like I'm cruel, okay? Unintentionally, of course, but I, I continue to forget that you could have a window in a backstage area. Um, because usually I build backstage areas that the visitors can't look into. So I'm like, okay, there's no point having a window. And then I'm like, sunlight though. Um, but yeah, I don't think I have a lot to say anymore. But I also don't want to like leave you for so long. Because I don't think... No, this won't have a, um, a real-time part. This will have cinematics in the end. I, I already... I already filmed the cinematics, so I know that there are going to be cinematics in this. Okay, what can I tell you? Today, I had bubblegum flavored candy, which was very weird. Because, you know, it's candy, but you want to chew it because it tastes like bubblegum. It's like your head tells you bubblegum, but then the other side of your head tells you like, nah. It's just candy. It's really weird, so... I don't know why I told you that, but... it, Like, the packaging is on my desk right now, so I'm like... Okay, I can talk about that, I guess. Um, we're doing rock work right now, which was really fun. And actually, this is kind of a tip. Um, if you have... Some terraforming going on in... The... Like, very close to your path. Sometimes you have this, like, ugly edge of the terraforming. And you can kind of just, like patch this up with rocks. I mean, obviously if it fits the enclosure and the floor paint and whatever, but usually you can kind of do that. Um, and I do that a lot and I think it looks fine. I mean, you can obviously tell me if you don't think it looks fine, but I think it's a great way to kind of work around the issue with the terrain that sometimes presents itself there. Um, and oh my God, right now I'm with my favorite part, which is putting in foliage. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love building and I love looking up ideas and getting inspired for some good old architecture, but I don't know, in the end, if once you get to the point where you get to cover it all in plants and make it somewhat like overgrown and natural, like that's the part that makes me so happy about it and that really just, just makes it so lively. Like stuff like what you just saw me do there, like these little like bushes that grow over this dead tree, like stuff like that is what I really love doing. Um, so foliage work and rock work is always kind of my favorite thing to do because it's the most natural and you can just like kind of, I guess kind of almost turn off your brain and just go like, okay, we know what nature looks like because it's natural, you know what I mean? So yeah, I don't know, that's so much fun to me and um, I think we're gonna go back a bit in a second and work on the keeper's gate that I had to move around and I didn't put this in because it took forever but yeah essentially I had to move it around because I realized that uh, okay I didn't move it around yet so all of that we're building right now I have to kind of change later because I realized that the they plopped down the badger but the badger wasn't actually in the in their actual exhibit they were just like stuck um so yeah to kind of change it and i actually quite like what i did here kind of a little bit of a workstation because my idea was like okay the badgers probably aren't gonna do too much bad stuff to a little bit of a table and a little bit of paperwork and i always i, I love to put in these clipboards because i'm always like okay they have to have some paperwork saying like i fed the badgers on this day at this o'clock you know so uh, because I know that they do that. I know that they have a lot of paperwork, especially um, there is a zoo in my area that has dolphins and I don't know if you can still do it, but a while ago they would actually upload this so you as like a regular degular person could just go on their website and read the files for the dolphins and see what the dolphins were doing that day and it was really cute actually because they would write things like 
um, this and that dolphin was in a bad mood today, or this and that dolphin learned a new trick. It was, it was really cute. And I mean, it's a separate discussion saying if zoos should have dolphins, but I mean, it's still cute. I wish they would do that for every animal. I guess that they would never do that because that's probably a lot of like paperwork and like uh, office job work that just that's not what a zookeeper is there for and I understand that but I mean that would be so adorable but away from the dolphins back to the badgers because we are already at the little finishing touches of this exhibit and uh also, these are some little tips in case you're ever stuck with your uh, exhibit that you're building and you're like, okay, uh, I'm almost done, but I'm not really satisfied with how the floor looks or it still looks kind of empty. Um, these are some small little things that you can do. Try to remember to add some like dead tree pieces. It can be the very small pieces. It doesn't have to be this huge lock thing, but with uh, it didn't actually come with the America pack. It, did come as an update to the base game. There are these tiny, tiny little pieces from the beaver dam that you can just use for whatever and they look really good on the floor. Another thing that you can do is the African grass. It did not come, it's just called African grass, but it didn't come with the Africa pack. Um, and it just gives some depth to, uh, you know, well, the floor. <laughs> um, because I, I really like the grass because your eye doesn't really catch it, but you recognize that there's some differentiation differences mm -hmm, in the texture of the floor. And my third uh, tip, and but for that you would need the aquatic pack, is the small aquatic rocks, like the very small ones, kind of sunken into the ground, almost like pebble. Um, they also instantly give more texture to the ground and uh, also they're ki quite nice to sort of frame some more natural uh, foliage work. Like if you just put some pebbles around it because they would naturally collect there because not that many animals or people would walk there so they would kind of be pushed to the side I guess. Um, also I mean obviously they affect the traversable area so we'd have to keep that in mind. Um, just putting them in an open field kind of hurts the traversable area but if you put it under a tree I mean the animal isn't gonna work walk there anyway so it doesn't really matter that much um, and yeah I guess it's I didn't plan on giving you this tip these tips but there you go I just used them in front of you so why not explain why I do that um, it's really just for a texture of the ground and um, here you see me build a little bit of a gate that's when I realized that you know, I have to keep this open or the badgers will be just like stuck in this little like employee room in the back, you know? So I kept this open, kind of put a little bit of a gate out of the fence pieces. Um, oh, they were a blessing, weren't they? <laughs> so um, yeah, I love them. Um, yeah, so these are just like some small little things. And then one bigger thing that I did, and it was just like, cause I had the space, didn't know what I wanted to do with it, thought, why not? I make a little bit of like faux drainable pond, which is what you can see me do right now. And this is actually the last thing of the speed build. Uh, I think you all know the the drill with the drainable pond, so I'm not really explaining those. But I want to thank you so much for watching. I will hope you will stick around and see more of the animals uh, that we're going to put in. Next video will be a lynx. And yes, I hope to see you around another time and I hope that you enjoy some cinematics that will be after I'm finally done talking. Bye!